Good day kids, after going on an adventure visiting the different habitats of animals, you will now start your journey to the world of plants. In this lesson, you will discover the different environments in which plants live and also understand how they adapt to their ideal place. Lastly, you will grasp the importance of protecting and conserving these plant habitats. In this lesson, you will, first, describe the different habitats of plants, second, make a list or table and classify some Philippine plants according to their habitats and characteristics, third, identify the structures that help plants survive in their habitat, and lastly, explain the importance of protecting and conserving the habitats of plants. Let's do activity number one. Perform the activity by identifying the habitats of the plants. Be mindful not to step on plants or pick flowers during the activity proper. Like other living things, different types of plants exhibit distinct characteristics. These characteristics are suited to their specific habitats, enabling them to effectively adapt to their surroundings. Let us discuss the different types of plant habitats. First is the terrestrial habitats. Terrestrial plants are those that live and survive on land. There are different types of terrestrial habitats, forests, grassland, desert, and tundra. Forests serve as a habitat for a broad range of plants, small and big. A number of tall trees such as nara, acacia, yakal, and mahogany can be found in this habitat. The canopy of these tall trees has leaves that are very dense and thick. That is why forest habitats usually receive very little sunlight. The leaves above the trees block the sun's rays from reaching the forest floor. This makes its environment slightly dark and damp, which is suitable for some plants like mosses and ferns. In the Philippines, forests are called tropical rainforests because they receive a great amount of rainfall. This makes these habitats favorable for different types of plants. A grassland is filled with different types of grasses. It can be humid and wet with tall grasses, or dry and hot with short grasses. The soft bodies and slender leaves of grass enable them to adapt to varying weather and temperatures. Grasslands have soil that is rich in organic matter because most grasses die yearly, which makes the soil always fertile.
A desert is a harsh environment with extreme temperatures. This habitat is very hot and dry during the day and cold at night. Despite these challenging conditions, plants like cactus, euphorbia, and Joshua tree survive in this habitat. The plants in the desert have specialized body structures, such as fleshy and waxy stems, that can store water. Some even have spines or modified leaves that reduce water loss. The tundra is a habitat characterized by extremely cold temperatures and the absence of trees. It is found in the Arctic regions of the Northern Hemisphere and in some high-altitude areas. The tundra is known for its frozen landscape, with a layer of permanently frozen soil called permafrost. Due to the harsh conditions of this habitat, only certain plants like mosses, lichens, cotton grass, and low-growing shrubs can survive. These plants usually grow in groups and stay low to the ground to avoid icy winds. The second kind of plant habitat is the aquatic habitat. Plants that live in water are called aquatic plants. These plants are further grouped into the two types of aquatic habitats where they grow, freshwater and saltwater. Rivers, lakes, and streams are examples of freshwater habitats. In these environments, aquatic plants like water spinach, kong kong, lilies, and lotus thrive. Freshwater plants mostly have round, glossy leaves. They are supported by a fleshy stalk that has air spaces. These air spaces help the leaves float on the water surface. Others have rounded stems with thick and waxy leaves. Saltwater or marine habitats include seas and oceans. These environments have high salinity or salt content. Despite this condition, certain plants such as mangrove trees and seagrasses thrive in these environments. These aquatic plants have special structures that help them tolerate high salt levels in their bodies. These plants serve as breeding grounds that offer essential resources and conditions that support the life cycle of various animals within the saltwater habitat. The last type of habitat is the aerial habitat. Aerial habitat refers to an environment where plants grow above the ground, often on other plants or structures, rather than in the soil. These plants are also known as epiphytes. These plants have adapted to grow in environments where they can get sunlight and nutrients without relying on soil. Instead, they get moisture and nutrients from the air, rain, and debris around them using their aerial roots. Orchids, Spanish moss, bromeliads, and wax plants are examples of aerial plants. Now kids, let's take a look at this diagram. It shows a quick summary of everything we learned in our lesson today.
All right, kids, it's time for activity number two. Study the following pictures. Identify the general habitat of each plant, terrestrial, aerial, or aquatic. Then, if possible, name the specific habitat of each type of plant. Write your answer in your notebook. Now, let's move on to activity number three. And finally, kids, let's do activity number four, our last activity for today.